Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna talk some more about finding the inverse of a function algebraically, and we're gonna look at some examples involving square root functions. So let's find algebraically the inverse of the function f of x equals the square root of x minus two. We're also gonna find the domain and range of this function here. And so I do wanna mention that real quick, to, if we mention the domain and range of f, the graph of the function is gonna look something like the following. This will be, this function right here is our standard square root function, but it's been shifted to the left by two uh, because of the x minus two inside of the square root. And as such, our graph would look something like this. Again, it looks like the standard square root function, but shifted to the right by two. Therefore, the domain of f is gonna equal two to infinity. And then the range of f, because we didn't do any vertical transformations, the range will just be zero to infinity. So we can look at the domain and range of this function very quickly through our graph transformations. What we can already do is we can already predict what the graph of f inverse is gonna look like. If we draw the diagonal line y equals x, we know that the graph of f inverse will be the reflection of, this fun of the, the original function f across this diagonal line. So we're gonna get something like the following, f inverse right there. That's what this graph would look like. Uh, remember the white graph here was f. So let's consider the algebraic function for f inverse, right? So we'd seen previously that the function f is given by the relationship y equals the square root of x minus two, where we replaced f of x with y right here. In order to go to the bizarro realm and get f inverse, we're gonna switch the roles of x and y right here. y becomes an x and x becomes a y. And now we have to solve for the inverse function, we have to solve for y in this case, by performing the inverse operations. We're trying to get y all by itself on the, uh, that, that's on the right hand side of the equation. Well, to get rid of the square root function, we apply its inverse, x, uh, we, we square both sides. This gives us that y minus two is equal to x squared. And then we'll add two to both sides. Uh, we add two to cancel the plus two that's on the left-hand side. This gives us y equals x squared plus two. Uh, but when we say y here, we're really gonna put in the name of the inverse function, f inverse, so we're very specific. So here's the formula for our inverse function. f inverse of x is x squared plus two. But we do have to be careful about domain and range. Because of the domain convention, unless we specify otherwise, one, when they see the formula y equals x squared plus two, you would assume that the domain is maximal, that is, it'd be all real numbers. But because of the domain and range of the original function, in order to make the inverse function one-to-one, -one, we actually don't get the left-hand side of this parabola. Uh, instead, we're gonna switch the domain and range of f to give us the domain and range of f inverse. Uh, the, the domain of f inverse is gonna be the range of f, which means it's gonna be zero to infinity, uh, which we see right here. You get any x value to the right of the y-axis there. And the range of f inverse, it's going to be the domain of f, uh, which is two to infinity. And looking at the graph here, you're only gonna get those y coordinates which are greater than or equal to two. And so the range and domain of f inverse are just gonna be the opposite of the range and domain of f. The domain of f becomes the range of f inverse and the range of f becomes the domain of f inverse. Uh, let's look at another example, quite similar in nature. Uh, we have a function, uh, f of x, which equals two plus the square root of x minus four. So the formula that defines f is gonna be y equals two plus the square root of x minus four. Switching to the inverse function, the equation that'll define f inverse will be created by swapping the roles of x and y. The y uh, is gonna become an x, and the, uh, let's see, the x will become a y. And so now we just proceed to solve this by doing all the inverse operations. Subtract two from both sides, so the two cancels on the left-hand side. I like to put the y on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna switch the order here. We get the square root of y minus four. Uh, this is equal to x minus two. Next, I wanna square both sides. Make sure that you're squaring uh, the entire expression x minus two. Uh, like so. 
Uh, this would then give us y minus 4 on the left is equal to x minus 2 squared. Uh, for which, if we want to, we can, we could multiply that out. I'm going to leave it factored for reasons that will become clear in just a second. And then minus, I guess we want a plus 4 to both sides. And this is going to give us that y equals x minus 2 squared plus 4. But then again, I'm going to get rid of the y in the final stage and come over here and say f inverse of x equals that. So it's very clear that this formula is giving us the formula of the inverse function. If we were to compose this function with f, their composition would just be x. These operations will cancel each other out. Um, in terms of graphing these things, uh, we, could, we could sketch a graph of this very, very quickly. Uh, some things to note here, I'm going to put a little bit of tick marks on the, on the axes there. Uh, something like that. So the original function right here, you can see that this is the standard square root function. It's been shifted to the right by 4. It's been shifted up by 1. Um, and so if we count that out, you're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, and then 1, 2 up. Your graph will look something like this. In particular, there's this point 4, 2. Whoops, 4, 2. And this is the graph for f. Now we'll draw the diagonal line in there to emphasize the symmetry that's going to happen. Um, if we graph the function for f inverse, uh, this function right here is going to be the standard parabola. It's been shifted to the left by 2, and it's been shifted up by 4. So we go 1, 2 to the left, or to the right, excuse me, and then we go 1, 2, 3, 4 upward, and then it's going to look like the left side of a parabola. And so this would be the graph of f inverse like so. It'll emanate from this point to comma four. They're gonna be reflections of each other. And so we can very quickly see that the domain of the square root function, we can find that out by solving the inequality, x minus four is greater equal to zero. Or we can see this from the graph. The standard graph has been shifted to the right by four units. So it's the, the domain of f would be four to infinity. And then the range, this one's a little bit harder to do algebraically, but we can see geometrically that you took the standard square root and you moved it up by two. That changes the range to be two to infinity. And so then in considering the domain and range of F inverse, the domain of F inverse is gonna equal the range of F, which is two to infinity. As you can see here, we get all X coordinates to the right of two. And then the range of F inverse, this is going to equal the domain of F which is four to infinity. And you can see we get everything above four on the y-axis. So this is how we can compute the formula for a function's inverse algebraically. Just take the original equation, swap x and y, and then solve for y. We can find the domain and range of those functions by computing the domain and range of the original function, probably gonna do that using transformations. Um, and then by switching the roles of domain and range, you get the domain and range of f inverse. One thing I want to mention here is the original graph was shifted to the right by 4 and up 2. On the other hand, this function was shifted to the right by 2 and shifted up by 4. The horizontal shift of the original graph becomes a vertical shift in the inverse because when you take the inverse function, the horizontal becomes the vertical. On the other hand, the original vertical shift of 2 turns into a horizontal shift of 2 when you switch to the inverse function because the vertical will become horizontal when you switch to the inverse function. Because the inverse function, by its nature, it swaps the roles of x and y. Everything horizontal becomes vertical and vertical for horizontal. The inverse function is just the original function stating on its head, so to speak.